What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So in some of my recent videos and on my social media pages, I've had a lot of guys asking me to make more videos about bass fishing electronics. And I have a lot of videos lined up over the next few weeks about how to interpret bass fishing electronics. But first, I want to start out by showing you some images from my fish finder on Table Rock Lake, where I've been catching a lot of good spotted bass and smallmouth that are post-spawn on offshore structure. And for those of you who follow professional bass fishing, you'll know that the Major League Fishing Tour has been on Table Rock Lake for almost a month now due to a cancellation of their tournament on Grand Lake because of the flooding. And I did most of my fishing on Table Rock before the Major League Fishing guys got there or right after their first event, which is pretty much coinciding with the first week of May and the third week of May. And in both these Major League Fishing events, a lot of the top pros were catching fish offshore. But during the first event, which was in the first and second week of May, most of the fish were still up shallow because the lake was flooded four or five feet and there was a lot of flooded cover in the water. But this didn't stop Aaron Martins from winning the event fishing offshore in 20 to 30 feet of water with a drop shot. And I actually found a lot of good fish offshore as well during this first week of May. And there weren't very many fish out there and there weren't that many good offshore spots. But when you found them, you would catch multiple fish and it was a pretty good bite. And then during the second Major League Fishing event, when they came back to Table Rock Lake due to the cancellation on Grand Lake, most of the fish had moved off the bank because the lake was falling and the water temperatures were warming up and guys were catching fish offshore again on drop shots and swim baits and that's how Jacob Wheeler actually won the event. And he was fishing a lot of areas that are very similar to the ones I'm about to show you but he had a lot more fish offshore to work with where when the, I was fishing out here I may have only found six or seven spots in a three mile stretch of lake that had fish on them and each spot may have only had ten bass where when he was fishing there, there were fish literally all over the lake offshore. And so just keep that in mind when you're looking through these images. You'll see that there aren't a ton of bass on my graph, but that's because I was fishing on the very front end of this offshore bite right when it was starting. Okay, so enough about Major League Fishing. Let's jump into these sonar recordings. So in this first image, you'll see a group of spotted bass that's off a main lake point in the mouth of a spawning creek. And these spotted bass were setting up anywhere from 15 to 20 feet of water up on top of the point. And they had just moved out of the creek where they spawned and were staging to move out to the main river channel. And you can tell that there are fish on this point because you can see these small isolated dots. They're separated from the bottom. And if you look at this image and you have no idea what's going on, and you don't understand how to read a fish finder, check out my complete guide to bass fishing electronics. It breaks down the basics of how to understand images from your 2D sonar, down imaging, and side imaging. And it's a pretty lengthy video, but it's my most popular video on my channel, and a lot of people seem to like it. So if you don't understand this image, go check out that video, then come back, and this will all make a lot more sense. So you'll notice here that there are 10 to 12 dots on your screen, and I'll point them out right here. And these are all spotted bass. And you'll notice that some of the bass are close to the bottom, like the bass over here. And then other bass are suspended three to four feet off the bottom. And on this spot, I was catching the bass that are on the bottom on a shaky head. And I was just dragging that shaky head over these points and getting some good spotted bass to bite. And then on the suspended bass over here, I was catching these fish on a drop shot. And I actually wait for these fish to swim underneath my trolling motor and I would drop vertically on them and video game fish. And I actually have a video coming to my channel in the next couple weeks which will be a complete guide to video game fishing where you can learn how to catch fish using your front graph and a drop shot. And it's going to be a really awesome video so watch out for that one. But I've been catching a lot of good fish fishing vertically with a drop shot and then the shaky head on those fish that are on the bottom up on top of the points. So here's another image from my down scan, and this image is a little bit harder to interpret because there are fewer fish on the screen. And a lot of guys may drive over this spot with their graph and completely miss the fish in this image and not even make a cast on it. But if you look really closely, I can see three fish in this image, and I'll point them out right here. These three dots are pretty difficult to see because they somewhat blend in with the bottom. And the only reason that I know these were bass is because I saw this one dot on the far left side of the screen that is separated from the bottom. 
And these other two dots here potentially could just be rocks or a stump or a stick. But because I saw this one isolated dot off the bottom, I made the assumption that those other two dots were also bass. And this spot right here is actually a hard spot or basically a patch of rock up on top of a point in 15 feet of water. And a lot of times when I'm graphing over these rocky spots, you won't see that many fish on the graph because a lot of them will blend in with the rocks and set in the rocks and you won't be able to pick them out with your sonar. And so you may only see two or three dots on your screen when graphing over these areas like we see in this image. But even though we were only seeing three bass in this image, this spot was loaded and I probably caught seven or eight bass off this spot with a shaky head and a swing head. And Cliff Pace actually fished this exact same area during the Major League Fishing event and he caught a ton of fish like a week after I fished it right off this exact spot because I recognized the background in one of the videos. And this spot was loaded up with like 15 or 20 spotted bass. He caught 15 or 20 bass during that Major League Fishing event right here. And it's a very subtle spot. You don't see a lot of fish down there but it was definitely a really good area to fish. So don't be afraid to fish areas where you only see two or three dots, especially if these spots are hard spots or rocky areas, because those bass a lot of times will blend in. And then here's a recording of another rocky spot that was just one point over from the area where I found those last fish. And I also caught some good fish here. And in this image, you'll see three fish again that are off the bottom and around some bigger boulders and rocks. And again, these fish are really hard to see, but you can know that they're bass by looking at this one dot right here that is completely separated from the bottom and from the, what looks like a stick, just to the right of it. And that's what clued me in that there were bass here. And even though I didn't see that many fish on the spot, Generally, my rule of thumb is when I'm graphing over rocky areas or really any area offshore and I see two or three dots, I expect to find three to five times more bass on that spot than the number I'm seeing on my screen. So in this case, I see what looks like three bass off this spot. So I'm expecting to find anywhere from nine to 15 bass here. And I end up catching two good spotted bass off the spot and expect that there were a few more there as well. And so when you're graphing offshore, just because you only see three fish on your graph, that doesn't mean there's only three fish down there. A lot of times the angle of your transducer and the cone of the transducer only picks up a few of the fish. It doesn't pick up all the bass. And just so you guys know what these spots look like on Navionics, they're basically just a couple of rocky spots or rock piles up on top of long, flat, tapering points that are in the mouths of spawning pockets. And they both look pretty much identical on Navionics and on the graph. And I was just graphing around these points looking for something unique, and I started seeing all the rock, then saw the dots, and those fish were stacked up there. And then these fish were on the bottom, so I was fishing a shaky head and a swing head, and I was catching, again, some really good fish off these areas. Okay guys, so those are some pretty good images of bass that were setting up close to the bottom on rocky spots. And I actually found seven or eight areas like this around the lake that were in anywhere from 15 to 20 feet of water. It was actually really easy to pattern these areas around the lake because I would just graph points, look for rocky spots, look for fish, and I'd catch them. But this pattern only lasts for about two to three weeks in May, and then these fish will actually move further offshore and the 17 feet of water on Table Rock is pretty shallow, and so these fish only pull up on these spots right after they spawn, and then when they start transitioning more of their summer patterns, they'll move deeper. And the deeper areas are where a lot of the guys during the second Major League Fishing event were fishing, and I have some of these areas to show you on my graph, though they're not super impressive because the fish weren't quite to these areas yet when I was fishing in the first and third week of May, but I did catch a few fish off these type of areas, so I can show you at least a few that I found, and then just assume that there are gonna be more dots and more fish on these areas now in the first week of June than there were in mid-May. So first up, we have an offshore brush pile that's on the tip of a main lake point, and the brush pile's in about 30 feet of water. And if we look at this brush pile, you'll notice that there are two or three fish right around the brush pile within two or three feet of it. And there's also three bass suspended directly above the brush pile in about 12 to 13 feet of water. 
And this is the type of area that the Major League Fishing guys were targeting during the second event. And it's a spot that I'll fish pretty much throughout the entire summer on Table Rock Lake. So when I pull up to the spot in mid-May, I decided to try to target these three fish that were suspended over this brush pile first. And so I pulled up to the spot, picked up a swim bait with a 3 8 ounce jig head, and counted it down 7 to 8 seconds so it would get down into 7 to 10 feet of water. And as I was reeling that swim bait over the top of this brush pile, I got hammered by a good largemouth and actually caught one of those three fish. And I saw the other two fish following my largemouth up to the boat as I was reeling it in. And so even though there were only a few fish over the top of this brush pile, I was able to catch one of them. And then imagine when the Major League Fishing guys were here, if there were 10 or 15 fish suspended over the top of this brush pile. Well then they may have been able to catch two or three fish in a row, or 10 fish in a row, off a spot like this, like they were doing in that June tournament. And you can also catch fish off these deep brush piles by fishing vertically over the top of them with a drop shot, which is how Aaron Martins actually won the first Major League Fishing event. He was fishing a drop shot vertically over these 30-foot brush piles, over rock piles, and over standing timber. And speaking of standing timber, I actually did find one group of fish around some isolated trees on the tip of a main lake point. And this image is a little bit hard to read because you'll see this cloud at the very top of the screen. And that's actually my boat wake because I drove over this spot twice and it kind of messed up the image a little bit. But if you look at this spot, you'll see that there are three trees standing up on the tip of this point, And there are seven or eight dots that are around these trees. And if you set your graph right, you can normally get the trees and the dots to separate from each other so that the trees are kind of dull and muted and those dots are really bright. And you can do that by messing with your contrast and your sensitivity. And if you get your settings right, you can pick out these fish pretty well. And again, on these fish, I just threw a swim bait down, counted it down to about 15 seconds for these fish because they were setting in 20 feet of water. And I caught some other good fish off this spot as well. And I actually didn't have my camera recording for this because I was graphing this right after all my cameras died. But caught some good spotted bass off this spot as well. And it's another good area to check out. And again, this is an area in June and July that is going to be a lot better than it was in the first and third week of May. So guys, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this gave you a better idea of what I look for on my fish finder when I'm looking offshore for bass. And as you can see, some of these areas don't really pop on the screen like some of the images I've shown in the past where there's fish everywhere, where they're just all over the screen that looks perfect like this image here. A lot of times you may only see two or three fish down in the spot and that's good enough to make me stop and fish on the spot. And as long as you follow my other offshore fishing tricks like making no more than 10 casts on a spot, fishing 20 or 30 spots in a day, and graphing over a spot before you fish it, you can definitely catch a lot of good fish even on these subtle spots with very few bass. And if you don't know what all of those rules I just mentioned were, check out this video. It's my six secrets to offshore fishing the pros don't want you to know. And it's a pretty good video that will help you understand my strategies and my techniques for being a more efficient offshore fisherman. So anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this video and if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them in upcoming videos about electronics. I'm going to try to put out at least one to two videos a week showing the images from my electronics, explaining what the images mean and showing you fish and Navionics maps of where I caught the fish so you can hopefully take them, take that knowledge to the lake and catch more fish this summer. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed, and if you want more content from Fish the Moment, check out my website, fishthemoment.com. On my website, I offer virtual fishing lessons you can do from your home using Google Hangout, on the water fishing lessons where you can go out in your boat and I can show you how to find fish with your electronics and on the water, and also lake breakdowns of some of those popular lakes around the country where I'll give spot recommendations, conditions, and lure recommendations as well. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel in a more personal way, donate on my Patreon page. On Patreon, you can give a small monthly donation that helps me continue to make quality content for you guys into the future. And last but not least, check out my social media pages. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and I post a lot of great pictures, videos, and articles about bass fishing. So thanks again for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.